Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. There are two things that I want to talk about before I start burning Islam today. Uh, two things came up, they are very important to talk about. Uh, the first is that I was uh, banned for a day a few days ago. Yeah, um, on Tuesday. And I was banned because of massive reports by Muslims, apparently, about my Zakirnaik video, I think, because that's what attracted most of the Muslims on my channel. Uh, YouTube, YouTube, after that, um, unsuspended my channel because it noticed that my channel does not in any way violate their terms and conditions. That's how it works. So if, if anyone has a problem with something they hear or, or something they see, then they should just go away. They should just close their eyes or cover their ears and just walk away or just block. There is no right not to be offended. The second thing that I want to talk about is much more important that came up in the comment section. As you all see, my beard is growing by the day. Uh, some people ask me why I'm doing this and I'm just, um, well, to be honest, it is because I want to look more like my Apostate Prophet logo. Okay, before I turn this video into a shit show, let's start talking about the topic. I want to talk about this very hot topic that I think is one of the most important discussions that we have about Islam in the West today. Is the hijab a choice or not? Many people give their opinions about this nowadays. Uh, some people who just want to shine with tolerance but have never ever opened an Islamic book like the Quran or the Hadith. Others are followers of the religion of peace and think that just because their parents didn't beat them into wearing the hijab, it is somehow their choice and they can say, yes, hijab is my choice. Well, that's not how it works and that's what I want to talk about first. I think that the question, is the hijab a choice or not, is a bit tricky. The question should rather be, does Islam require the hijab or not? Here's what I mean. Uh, imagine um, an American Muslim family, an American Muslim girl, who was born into a semi-religious Muslim family and grew up in that family. Her parents always told her that she should be wearing the hijab, that she should definitely do it because that's the only thing that's good for her. Not wearing the hijab is bad and evil and whatnot. When she reaches the age of 18, this girl listens to her parents and starts wearing the hijab. Now, when people ask her if it was her choice or not, of course she will say, it was my choice. The hijab is my choice. My parents didn't force me into doing this. Well, that's great, but it's also heavily misleading. It doesn't really, fam it doesn't really matter if your family forces you into doing this or not. I have personally known, I think, one or two Muslim girls who wore the hijab voluntarily without anyone uh, putting any pressure on them, which families should actually do according to Islam. What matters here is that she is wearing the hijab because Islam orders it. That is what matters. It doesn't matter if the family uh, forces her or not. The point here is that Islam says that you have to wear the veil. It is not a choice. And that's why we say that the hijab is compulsory. That's like asking the question, is it your choice not to eat pork? It doesn't even matter if it's their choice or not. What matters is that in Islam, it is absolutely forbidden to eat pork. You could choose to eat pork, but you know that you go against your religion in that case and will be punished according to it because of your disobedience. And more importantly, punished by your rulers if they rule by the laws of Islam. The same goes for drinking alcohol, having sex outside of marriage, or any other haram thing for that matter. What matters is what the religion says. What matters is what the, what the Quran says and what the Hadith say. If something is ordered in the Quran, then it is absolutely compulsory. Refusing it is apostasy. Here is what the Quran says about uh, compulsions. It is not for a believing man or a believing woman. When Allah and his messenger have decided a matter that they should that thereafter have any choice about their affair. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger has certainly strayed into clear error. 3336. Regarding the it's still my choice issue, in Islam a child has to be taught to live according to the religion, to pray and to stay away from haram things, and the male authority has to enforce such things.
especially in a country where Islam is the rule, the ruler will enforce such things. And to clear our doubts, here is a hadith. Train your children to pray when they are 70 years old, and smack them if they do not do so when they are 10, and separate them in their beds. The hadith clearly says that guardians have to enforce such things like prayers. The scholarly opinion on this hadith by scholars such as Ibn Qayyim is that children are not responsible, but their guardians are responsible to enforce compulsory practices, such as the hijab for girls, and to keep them away from forbidden things. I think it's pretty clear that some things are just not supposed to be your choice according to Islam. Whatever your family does, it doesn't matter. Now let's look at the hijab. I will mainly talk about Sunni Islam, since in Shia Islam there is basically uh, not much dispute about it. The hijab is obligatory in their narrations, and their narrations are considered even higher than narrations in Sunni Islam. Anyway, the most important verse about the hijab is this one. And say to the believing women that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty, that they should not display their beauty and ornaments except what must ordinarily appear thereof that they should draw their veils over their bosoms and not display their beauty except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' sons, their brothers' or their brothers' sons, or their sisters' sons, or their women, or the slaves whom their rights hands possess, or male servants free of physical needs, or small children who have no sense of the shame of sex and that they should not strike their feet in order to draw attention to their hidden ornaments. And, O ye believers, turn ye all together towards Allah, that ye may attain bliss. Uh, chapter 24, verse 31. It's also nice that this Quran first represents uh, slaves, and uh, slaves that, are, that were castrated. The consensus of scholars who are familiar with the scripture and its history is that the veil in this Quran first refers to the veil women used to wear on their heads, which we call today hijab. Some translations even use the word head covering or headscarf directly, and we are talking about very renowned translations such as Shakir or Sahih International, which is my favorite translation, by the way. Anything else is out of question. This is an order in the Quran, and as said, any order in the Quran is a requirement. It is compulsory. If a country is ruled by the faith, which we call Sharia, a system based on enforcing uh, the Islamic law, based on the Quran, the Hadith, Fatwas, and other integral Islamic sources, it is compulsory that the state enforces the laws of Islam, just the way Muhammad and his caliphs did. The next verse that we have is very uh, <laughs> feminist. O Prophet, tell your wives and daughters and the believing women that they should cast their outer garments over their persons. That is most convenient that they should be known as such and not molested. And Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Chapter 33, verse 59. The Almighty Allah basically says that women have to hide themselves in ugly veils so that men don't harass them. Imagine going to a pro-Muslim feminist march and telling this to those feminists. <laughs> Someone should really do that. I should probably do that somewhere in the future. Some other sources can be found in the Hadith, which are the fundamental Islamic source after the Quran in Sunni Islam. And I just want to touch this hadith in which Aisha, the child bride of Muhammad, says clearly that the compulsory veiling was prescribed and she veiled her face. Judge for yourself. Narrated by Aisha. While I was sitting in my resting place, I was overwhelmed by sleep and slept. Safwan bin al-Muattal, a sulami a daqwani was behind the army. When he reached my place in the morning, he saw the figure of a sleeping person, and he recognized me on seeing me as he had seen me before the order of compulsory veiling. So I woke up when he recited Esturja. As soon as he recognized me, I veiled my face with my head cover at once, and by Allah, we did not speak a single word. And I did not hear him saying any word besides his esturja. He dismounted from his camel and made it kneel down, putting his leg on its front legs, and then I got up and rode on it.
The istirja is a very short phrase from the Quran, which Muslims repeat sometimes in uh, times of difficulty and sadness. He probably recited it here because he saw Aisha and was worried because he saw her and had a... So Aisha reports not only that the hijab was compulsory, she also says that she veiled her face so she won't be further recognized. It's very clear. Several other hadiths that we can gather also say that women can only travel with their male guardians, that men should never be alone with a woman they are not married to, it's because then Satan would accompany them, that when the hijab was ordered, women covered everything including their faces, that women shouldn't casually speak to men, men should speak to other women only from behind a veil, especially to married women, that Allah doesn't accept the prayers of a woman who doesn't veil herself, that a woman's prayers will not be accepted if she has perfume that can be easily sensed, that thin, tight or transparent clothing is in no way allowed, that people can't wear fancy and famous clothing, and that women are not allowed to dress similar to men. So all the hijab fashion clothing that you say today is completely un-Islamic. Other hadiths also forbid men to touch the hands of other women. All of these are authentic hadith in Sunni Islam. Before finishing this, I want to take you to the weirdest thing about the background of the whole hijab system. Omar, the second caliph, one of the most important people in Islam, and a close friend and advisor of Muhammad, was, if we uh, look at authentic hadith, a very misogynistic person, more so than Muhammad. Completely authentic narrations tell us the story behind the hijab. In multiple hadith, it is clearly reported that Omar warned Muhammad multiple times before the hijab rule arrived, that Muhammad should order women to cover themselves so that they wouldn't be recognized outside of their houses. Muhammad ignored this a few times and didn't do anything about it. But when Omar kept uh, bugging him and his wives, Allah suddenly coincidentally, coincidentally revealed the order that women should cover themselves completely, except their eyes and their hands. This also refutes the modern uh, Islamic apologists claim that the hijab uh, was there before Islam and had little to do with Islam. Such a stupid claim. The hadith says, the wives of the Prophet used to go to Al-Manasi, a vast open place, to answer the call of nature at night. Umar used to say to the Prophet, let your wives be veiled, but Allah's Apostle did not do so. One night, Sauda bint Zama, the wife of the Prophet, went out at Isha time, and she was a tall lady. Umar addressed her and said, I have recognized you, O Sauda. He said so, as he desired eagerly that the verses of Al-Hijab, the observing of veils by the Muslim women may be revealed. So Allah revealed the verses of Al-Hijab, a complete body cover excluding the eyes. So in a very weird incident, we uh, see here that Allah actually um, took inspiration from Omar, a companion of Muhammad and a human. Very, very weird. Of course, a Muslim would come now and say that uh, Umar was just a person of very high moral, so he assumed that something like that would happen. Sure. <laughs> Umar had very much influence in what Muhammad and Allah would decide to do next. <laughs> but I will decide that further in another video ded dedicated to this topic. I will also discuss in another video the stupid argument that men have to cover up in specific ways as well, just like women. To conclude this topic, the hijab, which refers to veiling yourself, is obviously compulsory and even specified and described in multiple Quran verses and hadith. Looking at all of these, for someone who is familiar with Islamic sources, it shouldn't even be a discussion to have whether the hijab is required or not. It is. Every Muslim woman has to cover up, just the way every Muslim has to stay away from pork, alcohol, gambling, prostitution, adultery, homosexuality, and so on. Everyone knows that everywhere in the Islamic community, in the Islamic world, women who are not covered are not even regarded as people who can talk about Islam, but in the West they do it.
Uncovered women are seen in the Islamic world as ignorant, immoral and rebellious people who cause unrest in society. They are even called whores. And most of them have to cover up once they get married, at least. That's what happens very often in countries like Turkey, for example. The veil has been a part of Islam since Muhammad, and it has come until 2018 as part, as integral part of the religion of peace. It is still one of the most important elements and connections between Islam and women. And it also shows that Islam is a very feminist religion. It is quite impossible that it has nothing to do with Islam. It's very obvious. And that, it's not, that it is not a choice is also very obvious. This is not even a discussion in the Islamic world. It has only become a discussion in the West because of westernized Muslims who always want to keep up with modern times but also defend their religion. And also because of their um, Western allies, because of their Islamophile friends. The hijab is compulsory in this misogynistic religion and everything else is nonsense. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and if you like my content in general, please leave a like, subscribe and don't forget to share. If you want to support me with my cause, you can also support me on Patreon. It's very easy to sign up and to support me with any amount that you like. I also want to thank uh, all my supporters so far for their contribution. I appreciate your support so much. Uh, for more updates, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram and on Twitter. I will be back with more videos next week. Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam.